So I wanted to build a tiki hut, but it was just too much money to have a kit built, shipped to my location, have to build it again, and then have to build the bar after that and stock it with everything. I realized I could convert my patio into our own tiki bar a whole lot cheaper and still get the same result and vibe. This is how I did it. So right here is what it looked like back before I started. I had to take our outdoor fan down, clear out a bunch of stuff, and then next I watched some other bar building videos and drew up my own idea on what the side profile of the bar would look like. I wanted a lower work prep area and an upper bar top area for drinks, for leaning on, putting buffets together for when we hosted parties. After that, I figured up my materials and I got on Lowe's website and placed the order. And for about 65 bucks, they loaded it all up, delivered it to me, unloaded it, and put it right on my driveway out in the county. I wanted an outline to work off of and to make sure I had clearance all around. So I got some painter's tape and I laid out where the footprint of this thing was going to be. I also got in our mini fridge and so I took the styrofoam top that was on it, placed it in order to check for clearances and make sure that was going to fit there as well. So then the construction started. Being outside, I didn't actually attach it to the house, but I didn't want it to move, so I used 4x4s and 2x4s for a rock-solid base and foundation to build off of, and that made it heavy enough that it won't move. If it blows away, we're probably going to lose the house too. A great investment was this Craig jig. I was able to make pocket holes in the 2x4s and neatly join everything together. I started over by the brick in the back wall of the patio and then I cut down the 4x4s, set them out at key points along the way, and then I made measurements for my 2x4 cross supports and started putting everything together. And I built support and strength as I went along. I also needed to have lower sections that would be a place where I could screw in the dog-eared cedar fence posts. I built the outer perimeter and then the inside lower section where my lower prep area was going to be as well. And this is at the end of the first day of building. I had a good basic skeleton of the thing put together, keeping everything nice and level along the way. I slid the mini fridge in too. I couldn't resist doing that to make sure we were good. Next, it was on to plumbing for the bar sink. Now, I already had PEX tubing along the back wall screwed into our multi-way faucet adapter. For off of the adapter, I've got a water filter that filters the water for my drip irrigation, and I basically ran PEX tubing all along the back wall of the patio out to where my timer is and all of that stuff for the drip irrigation. But I got some fittings, some tees, and things like that so I could tee off of that PEX and run it right into the bar. I used 90 degree PEX elbows and routed it over the fridge and around to the area where it, later on I would bring it up through a floor that I put in uh, to feed the sink. In the winter time I actually disconnect the PEX tubing and the water filter and blow the lines out with an air compressor and I don't have to worry about freezing. I built extra bar top supports in and using a jigsaw I measured and notched out and put the flooring in the bottom. I hit both sides of that plywood with some penetrating sealer in order to protect it from water as well. Next up, I cut my dog-eared cedar fence down and started installing it to the outside. For the base of the lower and upper bars, I used half-inch marine-grade plywood. First, I cut it to basic size with a circular saw, and then I laid it out on top, penciled where my notches were going to be, and jigsawed for those areas. Then I overlaid it and the backsplash area with dog-eared cedar fencing. Then I did the same thing with the bar top. Now this was a challenge because I wanted a certain amount of overhang around the outside of the bar area and a bit of overhang over the lower bar area on the inside. So I clamped the sheets to the bar, I cut out for that inside area first, and then I measured underneath and marked and connected the dots and cut the outside of it. Once I had the bar top on, I cut out for the bar sink right above where I 90'd the PEX tubing straight up off of the floor. At about this point, I also took out our old patio light and wired in an outdoor ceiling fan with a parrot pull chain. <laughs> our living room started looking like a tiki wholesaler's warehouse with all the stuff that I was buying on Amazon, by the way. Links are in the description below of the video for most of the stuff you see here if you're interested. I then took treated lodge poles and I chopped 45 degree angles on them and I made bar supports all the way around along the outside to give it that rustic look. And then I built a drawer for the utensils and I started making doors. Now I'm going to tell you right now, I am not a cabinet maker. I never will be and I'm okay with that. I then caulked around the outer base of the bar and I also sealed in where the PEX tubing came into the bar. Here's a few pics of how the bar top was looking. And then at this point I mixed up a 3-2-1 solution. It's three parts mineral spirits, 
two parts spar urethane and one part boiled linseed oil. Mix that together really good just with a paint stirrer uh, by hand. And then uh, you get your brush and it's a really, really wet consistency. And basically it's just designed to penetrate that wood, go deep in there. And I sealed up the wood. I did about three coats of that all the way around. I'd put it on, let it dry for a day, and then do it again. And that sealed it off to the elements and also helped preserve the color. Now, a few days earlier, I took 12 inch wide cedar boards and I glued them up on the edges and actually screwed them together with Craig jigs and then clamped them together and then laid them out and cut them to fit on the upper bar plywood. Once that was done, I glued them down and I came from underneath with small screws and then I put some weight on top while the glue was curing. Once the weight was off, I sanded the cedar with a belt sander with three levels of sandpaper. I think I went uh, 320 to 120 using a belt sander and then palm sanding the rest of it. And then I took cedar one by twos. I had hand routed out in the garage a few days earlier as well. And then I stained those with dark walnut. And I started using my chop saw to basically go around and fit them into the bar on the outside and then on the inside perimeter. I did leave a lip above the bar with that trim for a place for that bar, bar top epoxy to stay there. And so when I would float it, it would actually stay in there and, and then float off of the edges. Next thing I did was uh, put my outside lights back up. Uh, I got those rerouted around the ceiling fan. And then I went ahead and put an application of that spar urethane down on the top, and it looked great at first. But the next morning I got up and went out there and there were bugs and moths sticking in it. And so I went ahead and left it on there for the time being just to give it some temporary protection. I'll sand that off again later before we do the bar top epoxy. And I went ahead and put rope around my 45 degree bar supports and I installed the 40 inch tall tiki masks around the bar at uh, most of the corners. And I had all that extra dog-eared cedar fence laying around, so I thought, you know what, I'll go ahead and run it up the back wall for a rustic look, and I did that. And while doing that, I removed the old patio light that was on the back wall, and I put in a brown junction box with outlets. That way I could power my tiki light, uh, neon light sign and, and my upper LED lights that are going to shine on the back wall. And then I got some cedar, and I stained it for trim uh, at, the, at the edging with the dark walnut stain. And then I cut down lodge poles and I ran them from the bar top all the way up to the patio ceiling and wrapped them in rope as well. I had ordered rolled palm thatch on Amazon and it arrived and it was time to go all around the inside of the patio with it. I used a staple gun to get a start with and then uh, I did it in straight sections with a little bit of overlap in the corners and it turned out pretty good. And at this point I couldn't help myself. I started clearing out the, uh, the living room tiki warehouse and I started bringing some of the stuff out. I got Chico the chimpanzee hanging up, got the parrot out there, I got the four bottle liquor dispenser, and underneath it I had a hundred plus year old piece of barn wood uh, that I put in as a floating shelf underneath it. When it comes to the mileage signs, I just got on Google and actually got the real mileage to all of these tropical locations. I had plenty of cedar boards left over and so I cut out some arrows. I burnished them with a propane torch, and then I got my Dremel tool out and carved the names of these locations and the real mileage in and hung them up. Got some racks for the tiki mugs and, of course, the neon cocktails palm sign. I love that thing. I also put in LED lights to wash down over the back wall, and I actually have those connected via a wireless remote, which is really nice. I can turn it off and on from inside the house even though I don't have a light switch. Then I framed for the little back bar in the back, that way I'd have a place to put, uh, put our bottles. Used 2x4s for the basic frame, just a basic box type construction. And then I used more dog-eared cedar fence to go around it. I topped it with a cut down oak stair tread, which actually was a perfect size for that. Then I did the video porthole. Now for this, I got a porthole on Amazon. Yep, you can buy anything on Amazon, including portholes apparently. Along with that, I bought an SD card media player that'll play HD videos or 4K. And I happen to have a used LCD computer monitor laying around that I actually will later mount behind the bar. So what you're going to want to do when you get your porthole in is actually open it up, set it where you want it up on the side of the bar, and scribe a line on the inside of the porthole. Once you've got that done, you're going to take a drill bit, drill a hole in the side of your bar, and believe me, that's going to be one of the hardest things you've done after you've built the thing. But you got to do it so you can get your jigsaw blade in there. And then you're going to take your jigsaw and, and cut a hole and go very slow and keep it nice and neat. 
What you're going to do next is put a little bit of Lexel adhesive caulk on the inside ring all the way around your porthole. Set it up on there, pre-drill some holes, and go real easy with those screws when you, when you put them in because it would be really easy to strip dog-eared cedar wood. And then after that, what I did is I downloaded some 4K videos of undersea life, submarine waves, you know, splashing about, mermaids blowing kisses at visitors, and I put all that on the card. Once you get your video monitor set up and you get the SD card plugged in via an HDMI cable, you can actually set that thing up to where anytime power hits it, it'll automatically power up and start playing. I also ran LED lights under the bar top for a cool color fading effect at night. Next, it was time to prep for the bar top epoxy pour. I used Incredible Solutions bar top epoxy and had really good results with it. You'll want to watch their video process here on YouTube for that and be sure and follow it. Because if you don't do bar top epoxy right, it can turn out really bad. This is one of those kind of deals where you get one shot at it. And so after the moth incident with uh, the bar top last time, after I got everything sanded down and brushed down and then wiped up all the dust, got all the dust off of it, I tarped all around the patio with Painter's Visqueen. That was not much fun in March because those things act like sails. Did you know that? But anyway, we got the base pour done, and then a few hours later, we came back with the flood coat. My propane torch actually died about halfway through popping bubbles, and I had to yell at Katie to go get her blow dryer and bring it out. But it gives it more character. It is what it is. You'll also notice there are pirate coins that I glued down onto the bar uh, prior to actually doing the bar top epoxy. It adds a nice little bit of flair and, and neatness to the project. After about three days, we're all cured up, and I got the sink install finished. Now one thing I'll tell you, I did not want to cut up the concrete on my patio for a wastewater exit for the bar sink, so I went extremely cheap. I cut two holes in a five gallon bucket top and I ran my water line drain right into it. No more than we use for the bar, it's easy enough to just take the handle, walk over to the grass and dump it. So, with all the major construction done, it was time to do some tiki gardening around it and to make it lush. And so we added the needed element of tropicalness. Then I finally completely emptied out the living room tiki warehouse and we started having fun. I stocked up the bar with all kinds of barware and I had my first tiki drink. So now I'm making scorpion bowl punch, pain coladas, mai tais, and more, and I'm collecting some really cool tiki mugs. It took me from about the end of December to the end of March to do this build with a few days off a week. You can definitely do this too. I hope this helps and it inspires you and others to get into tiki and tiki gardening and, and having a great time and, and enjoying the vibe. Use these ideas as you see fit. Create your own oasis in tiki paradise. I've got links to almost all the items used in this build down below in the description section. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video, please. That uh, helps us grow and, and can help grow this awesome tiki culture. Thanks and a Kule Maluna.